everybody, this is Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I am sitting here with Rob Barrett and Alex Marquez. So how are you two? Pretty good, pretty good. Very well. Thank you. All right, awesome. And we are going to talk a lot about Solstice right now, and then we'll go into what's going on today with these two. So to start, I mean, let's just talk about the writing of the self-titled. So, you know, whatever you two or however you two want to start, you know. Um, you want me to start? Yes, sir. All right, well, I moved down to Miami in 1990. Yeah. And then we just started writing music. Oh, yeah. We were saving money to record at Morris Sound with Jim Morris. That was 91, right? Yeah. With Greg St. John? Yeah. And then we did that four song demo. And, um, yeah. Well, remember, uh, we got lucky because what happened was Karsten was there. Remember, he was picking oh, up. Oh, the Rape Dave show? No, no, no. He was he was at Morris Sound. Oh, he was at Morris He was Sound. picking up Evil Dead, The Underworld, that record from All them. Right. So he was, remember, he's like, send me the demo when you're done. I did, and she offered us a contract immediately, which is oh, yeah? pretty much one of the biggest labels now, SPV, so Steam Hammer, so well, yeah, it was dude. fucking cool, man. All right, awesome. And so now let's talk about more into your individual contributions to that album. And I'll start with you on writing the riffs. Now, was it, I mean, I know that James Murphy had a lot of really cool solos on there, but as far as, um, you know, like some of the main riffs and, you know, and some of the uh, other solos, like was it mainly you or Dennis or a little bit uh, of both? Uh, Alex and me yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh. writing songs together and... Dennis contributed like the one riff in the Eternal Way. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. He did what he could, man. He He's did. But he like was the solo guy. Yeah. You yeah. know, I was like the riff writer and he was the solo writer. Awesome. And I did a couple solos, but we were staying with Murphy when we did the demo. You remember how that happened? Album. He asked me to play on his demo? Um, and then we made, we made the, the, the disincarnate, we All made right. the trade. Okay, you play on the demo? Yeah. We'll okay, play, you play on our album. That that's hell yeah. That and then we stayed at his apartment. And it actually put a fucking fire in Dennis's ass because his souls got way better <laughs> from the point where Murphy was involved. So I, I think Dennis's tone is smoother. Yeah, I mean, no offense to James. That's still, he's that's still always awesome. going to be probably like my but favorite yeah, lead Dennis guitar. Dennis got that butter tone. <laughs> he is, man. And he kept the band alive when neither one of us was in it, so that's pretty fucking cool too, man. You know? Oh, yeah, dude. All right, awesome. And now it's going to you with the drumming. Uh, well, first I didn't know that you helped write. Well, maybe not the riffs, but just wrote the songs in general. Some which riffs. yeah, some riffs. Oh, you did. Some okay, riffs. cool. Yeah, Hell yeah, dude. We arranged together. It was me and him. We were practicing seven guitar. days a week. Seven days a week we would play, dude. Jeez, yeah. What I'm... better did we have to do? Yeah, we had nothing better to do at that time. <laughs> Drink beer, and play fucking music. <laughs> Hell yeah, right? So, well, let's talk about more with the drumming on the album. Um, I mean, especially playing with this guy, playing with James Murphy. I mean, how, you know, with your drumming skills, did you go in? Like, do you feel like, um, like, do you feel like you're already really good? And you're like, oh, yeah, I can play no, with these I, guys. I, 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 you didn't even really start blasting until Don't we started that out. Plasticize was the first song we ever blasted on, dude. Yeah, because I recall like you were really spending a lot of time building. Because I didn't up. know what the hell it was, and I heard Mick Alter, Harris, <laughs> and I lost madness, my mind. Alters of Madness <laughs> was, you know, Mick you Harris know. and Pete, and I lost my mind. And that album, that's the self-titled, dude. I did that in what, like three hours, dude. It was done. Dude, we were on fire. <laughs> that album wouldn't take long for any of us because we were so on point. I just remember um, the video of us when we did the demo or the record. It was cataclysmic outburst, and like we were chugging along, and like you did a roll wrong, and you were so pissed at yourself. And I was like, "Don't worry about it, man. You got God, it." God, to like, this Fuck. day, and, and I, I mean, he might hear it. I shouldn't spill the beans on this, but I, I don't. Care. There's one at what, the Philip Coronation. And, oh, boom, that boom, little boom, rock. Click, and I hit the stupid sticks together, and I can hear that louder than the drums myself. Actually, oh, remember? Oh, I, cool, I, yeah, I was gonna say. I, I thought that was intentional. I didn't know that was by accident. I think there's beauty and imperfection. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I know there is. Perf that, that's why, like nowadays, a lot of let's talk about um, his drummer Paul. You know why Paul rules? Because Paul doesn't sound replace shit, does he? No, he uh, he don't use triggers. 
Yeah, and and, and and if you listen to any album out now, the drums all sound the fucking same. Mm-hmm. There's no difference in snare. There's no, and that kind of pisses me yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, like, it's all fake, it's all programmed. And you listen to Paul, and Paul killing it, flying, doing doubles with no triggers. Mm-hmm. It's it's, 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 it's a right? Yeah, I remember when we first when you bought Eaten Back to Life, and I was like, holy shit, man! You know, he's like flying. Remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we were laughing because it was so brutal. That voice, you know, that, like, I mean, whatever. It's, it's ridiculously it's, heavy to me. That was the current. It was, it was, man. It really was. It was like caveman. Yeah, it was like <laughs> brutal with no, no technicality. It was just kick yeah. your ass music. You know what I mean? No, that's. Well, let's go back. Alrighty. So, well, you and I were just talking earlier about how. You know, this album was just ahead of its time, you know, like, it was super thrashy, but there was also a lot of good progression, you know, that around the time of, I guess, some of the death metal bands that were coming out, you know, that was, you know, kind of the formula that they followed, but you also had that, like, thrashy, raw vibe to you, so... Well, that's what we were. We were yeah. thrashers. We... Death metal came as we were playing. Get yeah. me? Yeah, he yeah. actually was showing me all the death metal, because I was more like the thrash guitar player. Yeah. Creator, that was one of my favorite bands. We used to play that play, uh, at Justice for All fucking album all oh, the time. Oh, yeah. Just down. the entire record. This man can play. I'll never forget this till the day. The Price is Right. This oh, entire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I mean, when I hear something that I like, I'll learn it on guitar. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Alrighty, so do you all consider this album to be like the floor to death metal legacy? I personally do, but Death Thrash. Death Thrash. Or Death Thrash Legacy. Death Thrash. I, I mean I think you'd probably be the only band in that category, so <laughs> Pretty much, because Rape Date was pretty much thrash, so Yeah. I think we were the only ones down here at that time. Hell yeah, dude. Which is cool. Well we had some hardcore going. Yeah, and a lot of hardcore. You know what's funny, man? I get a lot of hardcore kids. One of our best friends, Sean loves fucking the band, dude, because yeah. he that's all like a hardcore band playing metal. Uh, yeah, I think that's why we sounded the way that we did because we liked all the same yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right, perfect. I mean, in the credits, we even thank NWA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were listening to that yeah, when that first album yeah. came out. Everybody was loving that, yeah. except for the PMRC. Yeah, well, they don't, they don't like it. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> Tipper Gore. <laughs> Bob Dole. Bob Dole. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, let's talk about how Solstice led to your individual careers with Malvolent and Cannibal Corpse and all the bands that you've been in throughout your lives. What? Um, what is the exact question again? Oh, how uh, Solstice led to your individual careers and all the bands that you've played with. Oh, well, I mean, it just went from Solstice right into Malevolent because we were all friends with them and... Phil called Alex to play drums, and then he said, all right, well, we got to bring Rob in, too. Yep. That was kind of like he told me I made it a package deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Because yep. then uh, I would have been sitting around waiting for him to, you know, come back to and do And then we, we did that, and then I guess it was a childhood dream of mine, you know, to try to play professional football. Right. So I went to do that and failed miserably, but at least I tried. You hey, know. yeah, that's all. And he went on to bigger and better play? fucking things. You know? <laughs> How many seasons did you play? Four. Wow. Four, two, three, uh, three semi-pro and sitting on the bench for one for the arena league. Which, uh, what arena? The Miami, the Miami Hooters when they had the Hooters. Oh, shit. I didn't do shit. I never saw the field, but I was there. Hey, wow. at least you were there. The Miami Hooters, horrible name. that's great yeah all righty and so now rob this question is for you do you have any current involvement with solstice or do you think that we're talking about maybe me trying to do some vocals like backing vocals or whatever pieces or bits or a whole song maybe we'll we'll see (laughs) we'll see what what, what what transpires up with ryan writes the lyrics right no i'm I'm actually writing pretty much oh okay he's written a couple songs he's actually impressed me man i didn't think you know he's so young i didn't think what he would do would but his phrasing is really good he's good he's he's just turned 20. damn well we were that age at that time he's good yeah, he's, he's mini Rob, man, pretty much. Mini yeah. Rob. <laughs> Rob, yeah. All right, perfect. And then, well, now we were just talking about what Solstice is working on uh, with, like, a short run in the album. So could you elaborate on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, well, the album's pretty much written and the drums are done. 
all the rhythm guitars are done. The bass is done. We need to do some the vo some vocals are done. Some are most are not. No, we need to finish <laughs> that, and then Dennis does his lead in the end. Makes it master, and we're done. But as far as written and drums, rhythm guitar and bass is done. The album's done. Hell yeah. I heard the one song. I got I got some more. You wrote all the riffs. Except uh, that was my song. That I heard completely. That's why it sounds so hard. Yeah, the drums are Alex Marquez, killer ass drummer. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. But oh. yeah, this man's in the biggest death metal band in the world. So there it is. Yep, Cannibal Corpse. We get enough press. Let's talk about soul. All right. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, then, well, let's go into what we were discussing on a uh, text message about your foot condition. Oh, man. So. I, 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 went in, I went to live in Panama. I have a brother and a sister from there. And I got really into diving. Okay. But I went diving everywhere, like a swamp. It didn't matter. Yep. And in one of those, I caught an infection. Oh, shit. That he threw the two small toes in my left foot, I have no bone. Oh shit! And then this foot, this foot completely shattered, and when it healed, instead of the arc healing like that, it healed backwards. Oh! So it's like I got what they call rocker foot. Oh jeez! So I basically had to relearn how to play. Oh my goodness! Feet wise, but it's it's worked out. It's made me work harder. Hey, yeah. Well, that was actually going to you be got, my. You got to get the best out of the worst, right? I guess man. So it's actually made me work Build harder. Character. Yeah, definitely, definitely, De definitely changed me as a person, completely. Oh, yeah. Well, that was actually going to be the next question that I asked is how, like, do you persevere when you're coming into contact with, you know, like something that you've been doing, you know, practically your whole life, but then, you know, just one thing will throw it off, but you're obviously still, you know. Well, it's, I love metal. It's mm -hmm. my life. It always has been. And I don't think that'll ever change. And I think I'll play until I can't walk. Ooh. But uh, what it did do to me is make me realize that I needed to stop being such a fucking idiot. There Honestly. Go. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, and then, they should make an Alex Marquez drum program. You know, like you should sample yes. all your. I, I would love to do that. Dude. We're working on a DVD. You me know and Danny how many but drummers want to sound like you. That's snare, dude. Even I went to visit. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know Jason Sukoff, right? Mm -hmm. I went to visit him, and he goes, "I, I want that snare sound on the Resurrection." I go, Man, that ain't the snare. That's the arm, brother. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, You've got to be you. You got to know how to hit that fucking mm -hmm. snare, and a lot of people don't. I actually taught this a good friend of mine. I love this kid to, with my life, Brian Wilson. I've taught him how to. I know Brian. Down. That kid's awesome. He's yeah. got it down, man. He's banging that snare. I love that kid. I and Helwich, right? Helwich. Yes. Okay, yeah. He, he wrote a paper in school about me, so I, when he did that, <laughs> he's like the son I never had. Oh my god, that's uh, awesome. I love Brian. All right, cool. Is there anything else that you want to add before? Yeah, let's cool? keep talking some shit. Yeah, go, go, go on, talk here. all the shit oh, you man. want. Yeah, let, let's uh, talk about like uh, some days that you remember from the warehouse or something. How about when we did those shows with the milk crates? With the dude stealing milk crates from all the public. Yeah, we would go to all the local oh, supermarkets God, and snatch a bunch of milk crates. Dude, that crates, shit was funny. And we man. built the stage the one night and they were gone the next day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how we would like... Make any because I mean we had a we actually worked together, but we but we would make a little extra money by throwing these parties, selling you a cup for five bucks, buying yeah, three kegs, kegs of there beer, you go. and then when the band ran out, Three there bands were or two bands, you know, like instant death, what instant oh, silent, silent death. death, silent death, and then your old band, um, euthanasia or yeah, uh, euthanasia wreckage, wreckage, yeah, and yeah. Uh, then man, they played once, that a jeans band, Menace to society, Did monstrosity played too. I think they were down there once. We threw a bunch of parties. It was way too many. And oh, yeah. What about the parties at the Malevola warehouse? All right, well, that's a whole new conversation, <laughs> you know? Like, Dana was just talking about that when, because she hangs out a lot now. Yeah, she that's awesome. Over here. And, she, and she was, like, telling this story to someone about those warehouse parties, like Jimmy Farrell. Oh, my he God. He'd come up with his Mustang, and he'd be like, Hey, you guys mind if uh, we could watch you practice? And he'd have a keg of beer in his yeah. car. And then all of a sudden, 50 people are there. All of a sudden, it was a party. Yeah. <laughs> this was happening almost every weekend. I mean, oh we would, we, me and him would get out of work. And we'd drive up basically every night. And then I think we'd stay up there and on that the weekends. Blue Camaro. Oh, God, man. Mm -hmm. That that thing lasted forever, but I drove that thing to New York and back like four times. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's that crazy. Yeah, that big thing on the, the roof. Yeah. For your drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god, I can't believe you remember that car. <laughs> yeah, I love that car, man. I remember riding in that car. And I screwed wow. that car up the worst. I left. I flew back home. I was in New York. I flew. I flew home. Left the car up there. No anti freeze, just water. Totally froze the block. Oh. So when I went to turn it on, it was done. Oh my goodness, that's insane. Retarded. It's called living in Miami your whole life. You don't know none of that. Here's shit. another good one. Remember Solstice played with Atheist at that fucking Brad place in uh, Bradenton. Yeah, Bradenton, yeah. The night that Pee Wee Herman got arrested. Uh -huh. Yeah! Yeah! It was the same night. Oh man, remember Lionel was there with us? Yeah. I can't believe that guy's Oh, gone. remember when uh, you drove me, you, and Lionel in a van to yeah. Tampa to see Cannibal on the book. Exactly, the exactly. That we came the night before and we went to... Guts and uh, Cannibal. Yeah, yeah. Remember we, went, we came like the night before so we can go to Aces early yeah, and shit. Yeah, and we went there yeah. and fucking Luke LeMay came walking out. I think we went to Thoroughbred. Yeah, we went to Thoroughbred. And Luke LeMay yes, comes exactly. walking out from Gore Guts. Rob Barrett, I love the Solstice demo. Like, he was a huge <laughs> Solstice fan. Yeah, I do remember when yeah. we played Canada the first time he was there. Mm -hmm. Was at the show? Yeah, the Foufine or whatever. Part of that in Montreal. That, that, there's a video of that I want. Yeah. Actually, of that one. Yeah, I've just seen Luke not too long. Well, last year in Montreal. Did we just see him last weekend? Sucks. They were in Orlando oh, last weekend. Yeah, oh, dude, okay. out of the blue. Well, it was a great show. You were there? Yeah, I was there. Ah, he, who, uh, <laughs> that was so good. It was... Uh, Defeated Team V were supposed to play, but they um, they left the tour. Was it like a tour package? Yeah. Or was it just Gorguts? Well, like, whoever? it was Gorguts with a direct support, but I can't remember the direct support. Yeah, because um, yeah, I had never heard of them before. Yeah, they were good. Luke's a good old friend, you know. Like, they pretty much mm -hmm. started around the same time as us because yep. they did Consider Dead that right man. around. Still like, so godly. They, they opened right up with the first song off that album. The Solstice yeah. record, like the year before, right? Yeah. And that's a brutal uh, production. That's that guitar mm -hmm. tone is sick. Yeah, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> that shit rules. <laughs> yeah, because Murphy helped them out with gear and, and, you know, for the recording. I heard that they used James Murphy's Sabre guitar. Oh, really? For the rhythm. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. I remember that guitar. That thing is like wafer thin. Do we tell the story about, heavy as about the water in Murphy's rug, bro? Remember that? <laughs> do you want to let that one out? Like, Don't put any liquid near my rugs. Or that. Luckily, it was a glass of water. And I just went, whoo, and I dropped it. And then he comes home and he's fucking feeling the carpet. Dude, he checks this out. He goes, man, I, I, there, I must have a leak in the ceiling or something. Rob is spill it. Rob like, is standing on the chair right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm reenacting it. Yeah, he's reenacting it. He's touching he's like, the roof. There must be a, a leak in the ceiling because if you didn't spill nothing, then, you know, you're like, he's just, woo. And I didn't want to tell him I spilled something. He would have fucking ate yelled, he would have lost his shit. Because that was like one of the first things he said. So I'm just like, <laughs> playing it stupid and shit. Uh, but yeah, James rules, dude. That he had to stay there that whole time. Murphy? Huh? Where's, where's my, my toenail? toenail Murphy? <laughs> tell the story. I don't that. remember that one too. Uh, well, he was sitting there with no socks on and like he was leaning in the chair like this. And he fucking got up real quick and ripped his toe oh, out, like, ah, out of his foot. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, so that's why Phil yeah. put that in the retribution. Where's, Where's my, my toenail, toe Murphy? Yeah, just ripped it off. He's like, oh. oh my but he's, 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 he's awesome, man. Oh, my God, that's great. He's awesome. Last time I was here, when I reconnected with Rob, man, it was great. We saw Scott, man. That was awesome. Yeah, man. that was a trip because, like, when I walked into the show, that was crazy. Uh, obituary creator yeah, yeah, yeah. and I had just gotten in the door and then you know Scott's just mean mugging me and shit and I didn't know it was him you know like I just seen out of the corner like who's this dude staring at me what's with this trucker <laughs> so then I looked over like what the fuck are you looking at you know and he was just like what's up Rob that, there it is <laughs> dude Rob was like me. oh shit so I, I see Rob we're talking he goes turn around when I turn around I had the same shit I looked at him I could not recognize him what's up Allie Oh my god! What are you <laughs> doing, man? <laughs> I, know, I was like, oh my god, it's fucking Scott, dude. Scott, C. George. Yeah, that was, I mean, that, Steve Fashima, that was a great thing. I think that was just everybody being there together. Yeah. It was meant to be. Yeah, man, you definitely. Know, that was like a destiny kind Because I literally played the night before in New York. And mm -hmm. you were there, right? Yeah, yeah he, was, he took every single picture and he was a nut. 
He never got in anything. Um, I literally played the night before New York, flew to Miami or Fort Lauderdale. I got picked up by him, and we drove all the way over. Also, oh, you were up there with Demolition Hammer. No, I was right? playing with Thrasher Die up in New York. Yeah, and the Demolition yeah, Hammer was Steve's guys birthday. came out because yeah. I saw a picture you guys yeah. were eating dinner. It was Steve's birthday, his 55th yeah. birthday. I actually went and saw them at the Blackthorn 51. Oh, really? In, uh, How were they, also, right? In Queens. How were they? Yeah, like they played right after. Um, who the fuck was that? No, I played the Blackthorn. I don't know exactly what they were Yeah, some band from the city. Fuck, I can't remember. Is now, but they um, got demolition to play after them, and uh, they kicked ass. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, dude. That, that new drummer they got. Dude, he's awesome. He's Angel's awesome. Shit. A great dude, and if anybody deserves it, as him, he's a good friend. That's Actually, awesome went up that they got fucking uh, what's Riley that? back. Riley. Yeah. Man. I went up there and rehearsed with them, and they were like, "Okay, cool. I know I got a tour coming up. You know, in May. It's our first, the first time Solstice ever went to Europe." And then they call me and go, hey, we just got offered MDF. You got to make a choice. I go, well, I'm not going to drop a tour for one show. Yeah. So they got Angel, and it all worked out for the best, man. It would have been a nightmare. I would have to go up there every single time. And it, eh, I, I love was that, uh, doing that Time Bomb record. That shit sounds pretty solid. I love the drum. The, the, Dude, he's a mongrel. <laughs> Phil, Phil's special guest fucking... Uh, Words by Phil Facciano. Yeah, didn't Steve Reynolds call him and go, yeah. just, can you say, dude, he's a mongol? That's boy. exactly what it was. Dude, it he's a mongol. Like a Devo call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mongoloid by Devo was the thing. Yeah, man, that shit. That album sounds good, except for those kicks are horrible, but everything else is pretty fucking good. <laughs> Sweet. Anything else? Or? Oh, man, we could talk all day. Oh, yeah. You could probably pull out that recorder once you have a few beers and the conversation might get better. <laughs> yeah, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do a, like a part two later. Yeah. Let's, let's do the part two. I'm totally down. Yeah. All right, everybody, tune in for part two. We'll be back after some liquor. <laughs> <laughs> all right.